Faulkner. Good to see you. Uh, nice. And in, in case anybody's wondering how to spell his name, he's got a great step and repeat behind him just to remind everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's good to be with you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so let's talk for a moment, if you will, about the recall, because you're not only yeah. running in 2022, you're potentially running in 2021. If that recall qualifies, it looks increasingly like it will qualify. Yeah. Uh, I guess the question is why the need for a recall and, and the cost that comes with it when there's going to be an election next year anyways, there's not all Often we've had a recall in California history. It's a pretty extraordinary measure. Why the need for an actual recall now? Well, I think what you're seeing is a sense of urgency uh, throughout California. A uh, sense of urgency for a change now, this year, not next year, on all of the issues that you know, you've been talking about, particularly the issue of schools, getting our schools open in California now, not a month from now, not a year from now. Our public schools need to be open. Uh, when we see, obviously, the jobs that continue to leave our, our great state for, for other states, the fact that we have a million Californians now that can't get their unemployment checks, but yet we've had 30 billion, direct 30 billion this year alone in fraud. I think when it comes to the dollars and cents, folks understand we need to make a change now in California. And, and by the way, I think that's, that's across the spectrum. That's, that's Democrats, Republicans, independents, people who want to change at the top. Well, let, let's talk, though, uh, drill down on that issue of schools, because say you're governor and the teachers union comes to you and says, no, we don't think it's safe. We need everybody to be vaccinated. It doesn't matter what the CDC says. We don't agree with that. We're not going back. What do you say? That's where leadership comes in. And again, I feel so very strongly about this, as particularly as a as a father who has two kids in public schools. Um, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm glad you've been shining the, the spotlight on this because it needs to be shined. The fact that our public schools in California are not open, but yet private schools are, and, and teachers are safely teaching, students are safely learning in those environments. And it's not just the education that, that our kids are falling behind, our California kids. It is the, the mental issues that they're, they're dealing with, and, and it's, it's incredibly powerful. And, and the fact that we have not been able to do this. Look, when I was mayor, and I just finished our, my term in, in two terms of San Diego, and during this pandemic, I worked closely with my city unions, our labor unions, our police officers association, our firefighters, our, our librarians, our refuse collectors, right, to make sure that they had the opportunity to get back to work, to do it safely, to provide the help and the support that they need. That's what should be happening in our schools right now, but unfortunately, it is a failure of leadership. So, I mean, but what, is, what specifically does that mean? That's where leadership comes in. I mean, because that's the scenario now. Governor Newsom is clearly frustrated with uh, what some is happening with, with some of the teachers union. It seems like there's an impasse happening right now. How do you break that impasse? You have to bring folks to the table and say, this is important. Again, you have to put the full weight of your office behind it. I mean, this, this is one of those, those most important issues that we are seeing during this, this whole pandemic of literally other states that have opened safely. You're talked rightfully so about the CDC guidance, which says it is safe to open schools. That's what I talk about when the leadership. It's not about rhetoric and it's about, I wish they were open. It's about getting everybody to the table and says, it's unacceptable that our California public schools aren't open. Our families deserve this. Our kids deserve this. Right. This is incredibly important. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the news of the day. John Cox, Republican businessman from San Diego, officially entering the race today, although he's essentially been in the race for a while now. You've, you've essentially been in the race for a while now, too. Uh, but John Cox today with his first ad, instead of really being an introduction of himself, it's more of an attack on you. Take a look. Yeah. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner got the city to overpay for a high rise riddled with asbestos. The deal enriched a big campaign donor. Gavin Newsom said stay home, then dined with lobbyists at a restaurant where the wine tab was $12,000. Had enough of this? I'm John Cox. I'm a businessman, not a politician. Let's lower housing costs and get people back to work. Go to johncox.com. It's time for a fresh start. So he calls that ad Gavin Faulkner. What, what, how do you respond to it? I, I think you're right. It's an odd way to try to introduce yourself. Uh, look, John's been a perennial candidate, uh, ran last time, run for a lot of other different offices and, and lost badly. So I'm not really too focused on him. I am focused on actually getting Californians that believe, as I do, uh, that it's time for a change at the top. And, 
in offering myself as a candidate that has successfully run and won in the second largest city in California. And I think probably most importantly got results. And as a you know, proud Republican who got elected in a majority Democratic uh, city of San Diego, had to work with majority Democrats on the city council. I think that's what the state needs, is somebody who can bring people together, roll up your sleeves, actually get results on the issues that matter, the ones we've been talking about, uh, including homelessness, public safety. I have a proven track record of that, and I think that's exactly the type of leadership that our state needs right now. Well, we talked a bit about COVID in schools. Let's talk a little bit more about homelessness, because what you are proposing, what you did in San Diego, is radically different from the situation yeah. now. Your essential plan was to say, it's illegal to be homeless on the streets of San Diego as long as there is a bed for you in a shelter. So no yeah. more tent cities. And you That's saw right. in we San made, Diego we uh, that we actually saw homelessness drop, where in yeah. the rest of the state it increased. Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm, if I'm saying that wrong, but, oh, no. but how, how, oh. how would you describe what you want to do and what do you do when there's opposition in a place like Santa Monica, where they're going to say, no, 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 what you're doing is, is not right, it's not humane, you can't do that here? Well, we took dramatic action. Uh, we took dramatic action because we care about people and we care about you enough not to let you die on a tent in the sidewalk. Um, and so all of the efforts that, that we did, including the Bridge Shelter Network, which I set up, I picked the locations. Uh, and I, I made that, that, that agreement with, with everybody in our city. I said, it's going to get better. It's going to turn around. And the fact is, I did not allow tents on the sidewalk in San Diego because we do care about you. And we're going to provide that clean, safe, sanitary place for you to go, not just for a night or for a week, but to get back on your feet so you can get to that place of your own. It often involves uh, supportive housing. That's the type of approach that we need. And, and yeah, we had homelessness go down in San Diego by double digits over the last two years. And unfortunately, what we have seen on too many cities across California is it growing by double digits. We're better than that. We made fundamental change in California. It helps people. It helps our neighborhoods. That's the yeah. type of approach that we need in Sacramento that we're not getting. All right, former mayor Kevin Faulkner, uh, there's a long race ahead and hopefully we'll get to talk a lot more because these are such important issues, but we do appreciate you taking some time to speak with us.